Hi everybody, I thank the organizer for the invitation and uh, I try to keep my time. <laughs> so, um, first, uh, always, I have no conflict to declare. And um, the first question I think is why do we need antibiotic stewardship? And if you look on this slide, you can see the, the use of antibiotic in European hospitals. Uh, it's a, 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 there is a large discrepancies between countries in use, with uh, some uh, countries using twice as much as other countries, and all are in Europe. If you look on the same data with Canadian people, uh, uh, hospitals, you can see that there is a large also differences in the regions of, uh, with, in use of antibiotic in hospital in Canada. And the main question is, is there a single valid reason for such differences? Are the patients so different in the east and the west of Canada? I don't think so. So why do we use more antibiotic in uh, uh, Manitoba compared to Alberta, for instance? If uh, uh, you ask people in Europe on, did you take antibiotic last year? One third of European people in the community had an antibiotic treatment in the last year. It's a huge consumption of antibiotic. If you ask them, why did you take any antibiotic? This is the worst part of the story because I had bronchitis, flu, cold, cough, and rhinopharyngitis. This is for 50% of the person. There, there should be no reason to take antibiotics for this uh, disease. And finally, if you ask uh, uh, the people, th this person, before taking antibiotics, did you have any kind of antibiotic, uh, of uh, laboratory test? In all this country, 50% of, of the patients say no, no test of no any kind test. So I think we can do better. What is the result of this large use of antibiotics? You know this, I will go very fast on this. First, a huge rise in ESBL, E. coli, all over the world. Here you have data from Europe. So as a consequence, we, we use a lot of carbapenems everywhere, in all countries. And what did you expect? The rise in carbapenemase. So here you have the rise of uh, a Klebsiella pneumonia uh, uh, resistant to carbapenem. I'm not saying that they are, that they are, that they are all carbapenemase producing uh, uh, Klebs, but most of them are. And it is important to note that it is in blood culture. It is not like in the gut with no infection. It is in blood culture. And it's the same in Canada. There is a rise in carbapenemase producing Klebsiella or E. coli in Canada and everywhere in the world, as you know. And of course, you are aware that there is a good relationship between carbapenem consumption and uh, 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 carbapenemase producing Klebsiella pneumonia. The more carbapenem you use, the more uh, uh, carbapenemase you have. And it's the same in the community. Uh, for instance, for uh, 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 pneumococci. In a recent uh, uh, review of uh, uh, the, uh, the effect of antibiotic stewardship on uh, multidrug resistance bacteria uh, that was done and published in the Lancet Infectious Disease, it has been shown that uh, antibiotic stewardship can decrease multidrug resistant bacteria. So it is efficient, and so we should do it. What is the role of the lab in this story? This is the, sorry, the classical uh, uh, workflow in a lab. You can have the result of the culture in, at day one or day two, and once you have the result of the culture, you, sh you, you can do EST and ID, and it takes one more day, and, and sometimes it requires one more day if you want some more uh, uh, antibiotic test. So it's a long process. During that time, the physician is using large spectrum antibiotics for two or three days 
up to the time he has the result of EST. So what we can do in the lab to improve the use of antibiotic is to shorten, to decrease the time between the result of identification of the bacteria and antibiotic test susceptibility. So let's go first for a rapid diagnosis test. This is you act at the beginning, the very beginning of the process in, in the lab, in the classical lab. There are, there are many, and, and you know perfectly what is a, the strep test uh, for uh, uh, pharyngitis, and it has been known since a long, long time, more than 20 years, but it is not used uh, in many, many places. Uh, I've taken here uh, uh, the example of the molecular biology for meningitis with syndromic PCR assays. In meningitis, uh, patient management is, is highly uh, pathogen dependent. The outcome is related to time to adequate treatment. So it is very, very interesting to have a rapid, very rapid uh, uh, test. And the early detection is a major issue. And the molecular tools, uh, they detect a large panel of virology, virus, uh, bacteria, uh, fungi uh, uh, in meningitis. The result is available within one hour, so this is some kind of magic, a magic bullet. The sensibility is rather high, up to 95%. The specificity is also very high. So we are very happy on the paper from this test. And there are some publications, a lot, here you have two, that have shown that if you use this test, you reduce the duration of antibiotic in negative cases. This is what we want, reduce the use of antibiotic. And also, it reduces the time to hospital discharge for patients. So this is perfect, and so you just want to use this test because you have a positive impact of the management of the patient. However, there are some publications that were expected. For instance, the first one, you have a delayed diagnosis of TB meningitis that was misdiagnosed under an Asper simplex one encephalitis, and the patient the issue of the patient was worse. You have the same story for meningococci, meningococci in meningitis. So now you have to choose between reducing antibiotics and having this kind of drawbacks. In addition, what was, I think, very interesting, that in the hospital, when they implemented this kind of test, they had more demand of this test. Because the test was available, the clinicians don't hesitate to send every kind of uh, 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 spinal fluid for, 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 for analysis. And so there was an overuse of this test. And if you use it when it's not necessary, you improve the false positive results. And also, you spent a lot, a lot of money because these tests are very costly. So you have to choose of uh, what you want in this test. You can also do this kind of test, rapid identification uh, of pathogen in blood culture before the blood culture is flagged positive in the lab. I think directly from the blood from the patient. And uh, here in, in a review by uh, the Jordi Rello, you have a lot of tests that can do that. Sorry. A lot of tests that can do that, but there are a lot of uh, false positive results by contamination. We have PCR inhibitors. Uh, the presence of DNA is not infection, for instance, and it costs a lot. And so most of the lab did not implement this kind of test. OK, I prefer waiting, having the culture positive, and now I can do rapid bacterial identification of some things that grew on the blood culture, blood culture bottle or that grew uh, on the plate. And so you act a little bit later, but if you can act uh, fast, you still save time. There are, one more time, many kind of tests that have been implemented. Most of these tests are linked, are combined with EST, with molecular EST. Uh, uh, and so, uh, AST, sorry. Uh, and so uh, it's very difficult to know by itself what is the effect of rapid identification alone, because usually we have rapid identification and resistance together. 
But if you, there are some paper uh, uh, on uh, uh, the malditos, the mass spectrometry identification that can, that spend uh, only a few minutes, it's not very costly. And in, for instance, in this paper, they saved more than one day in the management of the patient. So probably uh, uh, this kind of, uh, of tool uh, with uh, uh, mass spectrometry that has, has changed a lot of the management of, of the patient. Uh, as a result of using uh, uh, the mass spectrometry with Malditov, but combined with an antibiotic stewardship program together, not alone, both together, rapid ID and uh, 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 an antibiotic stimulatory program, they improved the survival of the patient in their facility. You have also new tests of the same rapid identification with molecular biology. And for instance, I, I, I love this example, uh, for instance, with a, a film array for in blood culture identification, when the blood culture is positive with gram-positive cocci, you use a rapid test and they tell you if it's coag-neg or coag-positive staphoris. And if it's coag-neg, they have shown that you can discharge the patient more efficiently and more rapidly. So I like this because it's something like negative. You don't use antibiotics, you don't treat the patient, and the patient can be discharged. So this kind of test can be interesting. As a result, also, uh, you have rapid identification, but a little bit linked all together with uh, 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 antibiotic susceptibility because it is to know if the staff you have is MRSA or MSSA. If you do this, you can switch rapidly from vancomycin to cefazoline or from vancomycin to daptomycin. Uh, it was used. So for an antibiotic uh, a stewardship program, it is very interesting to have this kind of test uh, uh, linked with, uh, uh, with the program. Let's go now to the rapid uh, antimicrobial susceptibility testing. You act about at the same time of uh, the rapid identification, and uh, you have to, 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 to bear in mind that a rapid AST by molecular biology it is not EST by it per se. You are just looking for a gene, usually. And so if you are looking for a gene, you just have to ask a lot of questions to yourself. Is the presence of the gene always conferring phenotypic resistance? Are all mutations, deletion, insertion, and so ever conferring phenotypic resistance? It is big, if you have a wild type gene, does it mean that you have a susceptibility to, to the antibiotics? We know that there are many examples where the answer is no. In addition, uh, uh, you cannot test for all antibiotics with this kind of technology. And uh, for a majority of molecular approaches, one can detect only when we, what we are looking for. If you, if you look for a kind of resistance, you are not looking for a, another type of resistance. Saying this, it brings a lot of, uh, 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 of interest. The model of MDR-TB with a gene expert is well known everywhere in the world. It is very efficient. You can detect if it's uh, TB and if the TB is resistant to rifampicin. This is perfect. This has been applied all around the world, and WHO has pushed this test uh, 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 in many, many countries, and it has changed the management of TB patients. So this is kind of something very, very interesting. And uh, for, instance, for instance, I've taken uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this publication uh, from the time to MDR diagnosis with an expert. It changed for 45 days, as you can see with the traditional method, to one day. 45 days to one day. So this is something magic. You, ca you, you, you can afford, you, you, you should do that. However, it is, if it's not linked with a program, it may not change anything you will just spend money. If you look the time from the diagnosis to the time to treatment, it is the same with all type of technologies. The ancient one, the LPA, the line probiases, the expert. So you can have a result in one day, but if it takes 15 days to treat the patient, what for? What for? 
technology wonderful, you spent money for nothing. You have the same example with uh, all this kind of uh, rapid identification linked to uh, a PCR mainly for uh, uh, MDR diagnosis. And you have, for instance, uh, the, the, new, the newest example of the accelerated phenol system for positive blood culture bottle. You have identification in one hour, and then you have an AST quite complete. Look back, it's the last one. You have many, many genes, uh, many, many uh, 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 antibiotics that are, that are uh, uh, targeted, and uh, uh, the, so the result can be in six to seven hours. So it's wonderful. The, the accuracy of the, of the phenol system is quite good, although you have some major uh, uh, and uh, some uh, 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 very major errors that you have uh, to know, uh, but it's uh, rather efficient. And uh, um, it has been done in, a, uh, in one hospital with real data, retrospective data. They say, how do we the accelerate phenol system? What can this change on our historical data? And they have shown that they can decrease the use of cefepime, uh, uh, piperacillin, tazobactam, or aminoglycoside, and switch to other antibiotics that are supposed to be better to use uh, 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 to treat the patient with a uh, 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 good, uh, uh, so with good uh, de-escalation. So this is very interesting. And in summary, there are now many new tools available in the lab to speed up the tra traditional process for the diagnosis of sepsis, meningitis, microbial identification, and uh, uh, susceptibility test. These tools are promising, uh, uh, um, but they cost a lot, and uh, their place on, in the lab remain to be clarified, because usually you add this test to the ancient test, to the traditional test. So it's more job, more money, and you should really think what for. And what else? That is readily available, that you can apply in all labs, all around the, the world, and of course, cheaper. I show you a few examples. If you act before the sample is arriving in the lab, in the pre-analytical step. Look about this survey that was done in France, uh, uh, antibiotic stewardship in French ICU. Wonderful. Almost all facilities have a, an antibiotic stewardship program. Perfect. Uh, usually, uh, uh, in ICU, uh, they have 70 percent. They have a, 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 a physician in ICU that is a, a, the champion for, for the good use of antibiotic. Perfect. It's sometimes an idea. However, if you have question in the same facility about what is doing the lab. Do the, 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 the biologists call uh, for positive blood culture as soon as you have a positive blood culture? Yes, it, they, they call. Uh, uh, they do direct examination 24-7? No, only in half of the facility in France, they do direct examination of the blood culture 24 and 7 day. So only half. And the same for rapid ID and so on. So you have rapid ID, you have the accelerate stuff, you can do a result, have a result for susceptibility test in six hours, but only during weekdays. And it works. You say, do they call? Yes, they call. In less than six hours, do they call the positive blood culture? In 10% only of the cases. So what for having and spending a lot of money for accelerate PCR and so on? if you just don't call and give the result to the one that needs the result. You can do better. Blood culture quality. We know that since a very long time that you need at least three blood cultures bottles that are well filled to do a good diagnosis of sepsis. Okay? This is well known since the 90s. Perfect. In this review that was done by a colleague of France uh, for on the quality of bottle filling, summary of eight published studies, underfilled, 20 to 98% are underfilled of the blood culture bottles. 
and, so, and uh, 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 0.2 to 23 percent are overfilled. 0.2, why 0.2? It's not because it's perfect in 99% of the cases. It's because in 99% of the cases, it was underfilled. This one, you know, this is the same. So, what for? And in the same, in the same paper, the rate of solitary blood culture, it's a summary of seven studies. You have only one blood culture in 10 to one third of the cases. Only one blood culture. When you know that a single blood culture means the total volume of blood is not enough, and it means that it's false negative. Okay? So it's perfect one more time to have good technologies, but if you don't have a good sample, you won't have a good result anyway. So we have to work a lot to improve antibiotic use on the pre-analytical step of uh, 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 the laboratory. Okay, you have now a well-filled bottle. You are very happy. You did a good program to fill the bottle and a good education of, of the nurses and so on. So you have to, to, to send them to the lab. And it has been shown that the time of the pre-analytical uh, uh, to, to <coughs> from, 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 from the needle to the lab is very important on the result. And if you look on this study that was done in Italy, it's a retrospective study, so they did no intervention, they just analyzed the data. It's just, uh, I would say, surveillance. And, and they have seen that in some cases, because they are, the lab is closed during the weekend, the time between the needle and the lab may be more than one day more than one day. So one more time, you implement a very fancy and very costly uh, uh, technology in your lab, but you send your bottle in more than one day. And it has been shown in this facility that the more time it takes, the less positive you have. And you have many papers like that showing that the time is very important. Oh. Rapid AST, one more time, okay? You are dreaming of this accelerate type of stuff. You are dreaming of PCR. We need it, we need it, I want it. Yeah, okay, I have no money, I need it, I want it. But usually, in most places, they use the disk diffusion method. This is a, a, a survey in Europe. 70% of European labs are using uh, uh, the disk diffusion method for EST. Okay, you want a PCR and change everything. But now you have a new EST method with a disk diffusion that, is, uh, that has been issued that costs nothing, almost, because it's the same cost as the usual technology you have. It's disk diffusion, but you can read the result in six to eight hours with this new method and the new breakpoints that have been issued by the UCAST, that is a European uh, uh, um, microbiology uh, 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 guidelines. Six hours, eight hours, it reminds me accelerate. The, new, the, the fancy stuff you want and you are dreaming of. Okay, perfect, but this cost Two dollars, accelerate is all about five hundred dollars. Just think about what you prefer. And then diagnostic zero chip, something very important. And the last uh, example. You do bacteriology of closed suction wood drainage. And of course, the lab can send you positive result with a lot of bugs. But in less than 10% of the cases, it will be infection. You have positive result, it's no infection. It is known now that you should not send liquid from the suction uh, drain to the lab for diagnosis of infection. It is known. So what we do in my lab, it goes from the patient to the trash directly. We don't do the analysis because we don't want to give a result, because the result, if you send the result to the, to, to the physician, you will have antibiotic. In conclusion, 
the microbiology laboratory has many tools for improving antibiotic prescription. Some are very modern, promising, but very expensive. We still have to delineate their place in the lab. Most of them has been proven to improve antibiotic use, providing they are linked to an antibiotic stewardship program. Without the program, don't use it. They cost money, they cost money but they can be cost effective if you link into a program. And some tools, you have it already. You can just improve your, the process of the sample to the lab and in the lab. Just know where are your priorities. I thank you. Thank you for your nice talk and for to have, keep your time. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Uh, if you have uh, someone, something to, to ask, please uh, speak in the micro microphone for the translation and just tell us your name. Uh, good day. I'm Paula from Western Health in Newfoundland, Labrador. I know you've been talking about PCR rapid testing and things like that. It's a little bit of a challenge to have that in my health authority because we have a, a lab that we have to send it to. So regardless, it's going to be 24 hours for us. So. We've been doing some research in our antimicrobial stewardship program at Procalcitonin and its capacity to help you, particularly with sepsis and respiratory infections. While we can find lots of data and the capacity that it's used well in the US and some algorithms to help you make clinical decisions, we're not finding much in Canada. So I'm just wondering what you're doing in Paris and France. Um, yeah. Some publication, as you said, uh, saying you should use it and some saying you should not. But uh, it's probably the same uh, answer that uh, using new technologies is that if you use PCT alone, it will be probably not very useful. It should be uh, like in an algorithm of decision that you should uh, take a clinical uh, a bacterial result, PCT, and so on, and put all together to think. And so they use it uh, mainly in my, uh, in my hospital, in many hospitals in France, in ICU, not to do the diagnosis, but to know when they have to stop the antibiotic, for, for, for instance, for VIP. Yeah, because we were thinking about it for, we can't do influenza or PCR testing on nasal pharyngeal at the point of care. So it has to be shipped away, which is an eight hour drive. They don't fly them, 24 hours, or you could have a seven day turnover, depending on the day of the week that it gets sent. So we thought perhaps this could be an effective uh, tool in the ERs to help the physicians differentiate between when sepsis or flu or chest infection is starting. Because what we're noticing is everybody gets admitted during flu season and are put on antibiotics for for chest infections, and we come on, or like, no, send a nasal pharyngeal swab the next day. Actually, they only, you know, it was viral. There was no clinical indication, negative chest x-rays. They just, the symptomology. So we had hoped that that could be something we could use. Yeah, yeah, it, it is probably of interest, but we don't know, uh, probably, for instance, in, a, in the okay. emergency room, when you should use it and so probably, and I, I'm, I'm afraid that if you put this in the emergency room, they will use it like, yeah. More than it is, uh, 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 more, yeah, so, and so you will have a lot of false positive and false negative. The more you use it when it's not indicated, probably uh, uh, you get a worse result. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, I have a short question, uh, Nagwa in front. First, I would like to thank you very much for your very interesting presentation and I have a little question about um, the uh, sample volume, especially for pediatric uh, patients, and further for pediatric oncology patients. Those uh, poor children, we cannot do venipuncture so many times, and sometimes we face a big problem even to get these three milliliters for even one bottle. So to guarantee the good results, how would we compromise or do for sampling? Um, um, I had a slide on the, on the requirement for the pediatrics uh, patients. 
Um, what is interesting in your question, I think, is that uh, you don't want to, to draw blood like uh, three times in a day for, 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 for a poor baby or and so on. Yeah. It has been very well shown that you, you can't take all the blood in one time. And you have the same result at taking the blood in many times. Yeah, okay. So the most important is the total volume of blood. Okay. okay. So uh, um, that's why the, 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 the colleagues that work, uh, that work on the quality of blood culture, one of the things they did, because everybody thought that you have to wait like a few hours between the first and the second blood yeah. culture. And, and sometimes the second was not done. They said, just do four bottles in one row in the same times. Mm -hmm. And so they improved a lot the quality uh, 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 of the blood culture. Yeah. So it's kind of finding a good dose of the organism rather than to pick, and it's it, easy to do. To pick it up at a certain moment with the episode of temperature. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Thank you. Welcome.